So my story, I'm going to talk about the University of Cambridge, which is developing a blockchain-based market for trading carbon credits that will support reforestation projects to preserve, uh, preserve biodiversity. So the university established a center for carbon credits where computer scientists and conservation scientists will work together on the project. In short, the center will look at how to purchase how the purchase of carbon credits can be used to fund nature-based solutions preserving biodiversity. And the marketplace will be baked using the Tezos blockchain. And I mean baked because that's what they call mining on Tezos. There's probably a funny adjacency in there to hippie culture and conservatism. Uh, but my main takeaways here are, and it kind of goes to what I said yesterday um, about putting blockchain wrappers on things. One, it's really interesting to see the University of Cambridge lean in even more on blockchains, given their Center for Alternative Finance published one of these seminal pieces in the Bitcoin mining space about energy use. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but two, I still can't get over the fact that we're putting blockchain wrappers on bad ideas to make them sound like good ideas. Now, I love the idea of con conservation and reforestation, but carbon credits are just throwing money at a problem and claiming that the money inflow will solve it, right? A carbon credit, and I'm going to read what the, the article said, carbon credit is just a permit that allows the holder to emit a certain amount of carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gas. And just because you paid for the right doesn't mean you offset the fact that you had that output. And at risk, again, of sounding like a cultist, I think it's very fiat to think like this, right? We have to create real solutions to these problems. You can't just throw money on it, and you certainly can't just put it on a blockchain. Uh, so I don't know if anyone has anything to jump on onto there, but there's that. Naomi? Yeah, I'll jump in. I I agree with most of what you're saying. I would say that the the idea, the underlying idea of carbon credits, I don't hate because there is an idea that, you know, some people, some industries, it's easier to internalize these external effects. And if they're able to do that, then they should get rewarded and that should be able to pass that on. Like the tokenization of, of that value, I don't think is a strange or bad concept. What's actually bad about the carbon credit system as it stands is that it's incredibly bureaucratic and corrupt process. So you're absolutely right. It's like, let's not even talk about how efficient it is. Let's just talk about like how bureaucratic and and, and the, the corruption involved with all of this. So, you know, when, when bureaucrats have taken this idea of, of protecting the environment and they've just made it this very um, shady process, instead of actually looking at the things that could make a real difference, you've got to wonder how much they actually want to make that difference. If they actually wanted to make a big impact, deregulate the nuclear power industry. I mean, we're going to have fusion reactors within the next 10 years. That's going to be a reality. All of the research seems to be uh, presenting in that way. That would completely eliminate carbon if that was their main concern, right? It is absolutely the way we should be going in society. So it's crazy to me that we're dealing with this very, very complex bureaucratic process instead of doing the things that might actually actually make a difference if this was a, a real concern of theirs. But I'll throw it to you, Christy, because I saw your hands, hand go up. Well, I, I agree with pretty much everything you just said. I also agree with pretty much everything George said. But I would also like to say that I agree with uh, Daniel Kuhn, who, who uh, wrote an excellent opinion piece this week entitled Carbon Offsets Are a Distraction for Crypto. And that he said in, in in it he suggests that rather than sort of wiping your hands and purchasing carbon offsets that you invest some of that money into building renewables instead and uh creating creating your own infrastructure or contributing to an infrastructure that supports carbon uh neutral uh actual energy use so that you're not just buying your way out of a problem on the other hand i also like the idea of putting that i know it's sort of wrapping things in a blockchain and going woohoo it's awesome but yeah i like the idea of anything that may or may not well hopefully may uh counter corruption in an industry that is rife with corruption will did you have anything just to add? echoing yeah, just echoing both your guys' thoughts there. This just seems like a very press release kind of product they're putting out there. That sounds real nice, right? You have a carbon credits on the blockchain to save the climate. Like that is just perfect. You know, get some investment money in there. Maybe get some students to sign up for the class. Boom, you have yourself a career. So I'm not a fan of these things at all. I'm really not a fan of carbon credits or any of the systems that are out there for this, especially for cryptocurrency. Uh, Naomi kind of laid out the argument really well, so I won't add anything else there. But gosh, there's just there's some PR statements that are just rolled out there, and they they are just hilarious. 
It makes me so happy to have, you know, this group of people. And it's not just the people on this show. It's, you know, the people who watch this show. It's the crypto community who can see things like this and just kind of read through the bullshit and just uh, all, all of these, um, you know, f- uh, flashy press statements get thrown around. I really like this uh, this culture of criticism and just uh, just scrutiny, just looking at things. Don't trust, verify, right? I, I love that. So shout out to everyone who's looking at the world and, be, world and being a bit more discerning. 